surrounded on all sides by government infantry. As Seigo Takamori readied himself for his final charge, he would have perhaps reflected on the long and illustrious history of his ancient brotherhood and the sad decline that had led to the very moment he now found himself in. Seigo Takamori and the Last Stand of the Samurai The Samurais of Japan were first established way back in 794, when mandatory army service or conscription was scrapped. As a result, nobles of the imperial court were forced to assemble their own private armies in order to protect their lands and assets from covetous rivals and bandits. Trained from the age of 10 or even younger, the samurai that made up these local militas most commonly donned a type of metal or leather-plated cuirass called an oyori and a distinctive flapped helmet known as a kabutu, crafted from riveted iron or steel plates. On horseback, they fought with bamboo bows. On the ground, they wielded an array of swords, such as the tanto, the wakizashi, and the traditional katana. While later on, with the introduction of gunpowder, it was not uncommon for them to also brandish firearms. By the 12th century, the samurais had risen to such prominence that their leaders now wielded considerable political power. Until well into the 19th century, Japan was governed by a series of military dictators known as shoguns. On the other hand, between 1603 to 1868, the influence of the samurai and local armies waned following the gradual establishment of kingdom-wide stability by the emperors of the Tokugawa shogunate. In this period of relative peace, samurais more commonly labored as teachers, administrators, and advisors since there was little need to utilize their combat prowess. At the same time, the belief that only samurais could fight disintegrated, leading to the reintroduction of conscription in 1873. By 1876, the order had been formally disbanded. And so, in 1877, disenfranchised, marginalized, and with nothing to lose, Seigo Takamori and his comrades drank their last cups of sake wine before running headlong into a hail of bullets. Honorable to the last, the samurai were going down swinging. Seigo Takamori was born on January 23, 1828, on the southernmost island of Kayoshu in Kagoshima, the capital of Satsuma province. As a young samurai, Seigo became the most trusted advisor of Shimazu Nariakira, a feudal lord of Daimo that had, since the 12th century, traditionally ruled over Japanese provinces. When Nariakira greatly angered the ruling shogunate by suggesting that the emperor, a ceremonial figurehead should possess more power, he was assassinated in 1858. Seigo briefly considered ending his own life in accordance with the samurai principle of Junshi, or death by following, but was persuaded to live by a close friend. His next task was, ironically enough, to stay alive as the shogunate initiated a devastating purge of the emperor's political allies. During the ensuing Boshin War, which pitted the military government against pro-imperialists, bent on restoring the emperor's prestige, Seigo was instrumental in forcing the surrender of the shogunate in 1868, earning a reputation as a merciful and virtuous leader who spared his enemies. Gradually, however, Seigo grew disillusioned with the administration he had fought so hard to instate. In mid-June 1871, it was announced that the Magi Emperor in a bid to modernize the country, was seizing all lands belonging to the daimyo. The promotion of samurai officials on the basis of talent, not rank, was also instituted. And then, in 1873, conscription was reintroduced, opening up the ranks of the army to commoners and non-samurais. Seigo was further infuriated by the dishonorable way that the government had forced an unequal treaty on nearby Korea, which had refused to recognize Matsuhito as the new emperor. Urging peaceful diplomatic resolution, Seigo was instead stripped of his ambassadorial role and imperial ships were sent to sail near the Korean coast, where they treacherously provoked Korean artillery into open fire. Guys, if you're enjoying this video, please give the video a like. Apparently, it really helps the channel grow. Thanks. Let's get back into the video. 
Embittered by such disgraceful actions, he withdrew from politics in October 1873 in order to hunt, fish, bathe in hot springs, and spend more time with his grandchildren in Kagoshima. There, driven by instinct to promote the samurai arts as much as he could, he began pumping his own resources into the Shigako, a series of military training centers masquerading as samurai private schools. At these institutions, young apprentices were not only taught military and artillery skills, but were given a grounding in classical Confucian texts. At this point, although he felt the sting of betrayal, Seigo still remained loyal to the imperial government he had helped establish. His patience, however, was wearing increasingly thin. In 1876, the Magi Emperor passed a law that not only prohibited samurais from carrying their swords, but put a permanent halt to their regular stipend payments. In response, a wave of small-scale rebellions broke out throughout the country. Seigo, determined to refrain from violence and live peacefully in Kagoshima, initially refused to get involved, but the audaciousness of the government soon became too great for him to ignore. In January 1877, Magi's ships sailed from Tokyo to Kagoshima and attempted to seize the weapons and ammunition stores that had been left over from the Boshin War a couple of years prior. The government fleet ultimately left empty-handed when they were repulsed by 1,000 samurai warriors, many of them students of the Shikako private schools who had turned against the emperor. The final straw, however, was when Seigo learned of a government conspiracy to assassinate him. No longer able to turn a blind eye, in February 1877, he organized samurai students from the Shikako private schools into tactical units, furnishing them with weapons and ammunition from the stockpiles they had helped defend. With 12,000 resentful samurais at his back, armed with rifles, pistols, artillery, and swords, on the snowy night of February 15th, he set off from Kagoshima for Tokyo, proclaiming he was going there to question the central government. There would, of course, be no such questioning. To get to the capital, he would first seize Kumamoto Castle, the most formidable Magi stronghold on the island of Koyoshu. From there, they would then make their way to Nagasaki to assume control of the entire island and to board ships directly to Tokyo. Looming down from atop tall stone platforms, Kumamoto Castle was a formidable fortress that could only really be taken if attackers could somehow climb up the steep near vertical ramparts that formed its base without being shot down by arrows from above. Thus, when Seigo's army, which was three times as big as the imperial garrison, drove the Magi defenders back to the castle on February 21st, which had been stockpiled with extra ammunition and food and booby-trapped with landmines, they faced a near-impossible task despite their numerical superiority. Opening proceedings by firing arrows with letters demanding immediate surrender, when Seigo received no response, he ordered his men to assault the castle's keep in the early hours of February 22nd. The next two days were a bloody affair, with Satsuma samurai either getting shot down as they frantically clambered up the ramparts, or, if they managed to scale it, being mown down by rifle fire as they made suicidal death charges on the black walls of the keep. Despite these sacrifices, Seigo made little progress, and with the knowledge that government reinforcements were on their way, he made the call to retreat and regroup. What followed was a months-long war of attrition as the samurai were forced to fight on the three fronts, against the castle, against a regiment of imperialists to the south, and against reinforcements coming in from the north. Surprisingly, the samurais held their ground, continuing to besiege the castle with artillery fire. They also remained vigilant, capturing imperial messengers that tried to break out, decapitating them, and then flinging their heads back into the castle to show their disapproval. By March 1st, the imperial garrison was so low on ammunition that soldiers were being forced to dig up unexploded Satsuma ordnance. All the while, the samurai lines were advancing, being so close at one point that combatants were able to exchange verbal threats. 
By mid-April, however, Sago's renegades were broadsided by a surprise attack led by Commander Major Uko Yasukata, who was able to push back the samurai and link up with Imperial reinforcements. Provided with 3,000 rounds of ammunition and several hundred bags of rice, it wasn't long until the defenders had the upper hand. Now, finding themselves encircled by a well-supplied imperialist cordon, the samurai disintegrated into several smaller bands that were then hunted down and killed as they fled across southern Kyushu. Whittled down to only a few hundred survivors, Seigo's group escaped back to Kagoshima, where they had started their campaign. There, on Shiroyama Hill, they made their last stand as 30,000 government troops closed in on their position. The night before the final showdown, Seigo and his confrères listened to the music of the Satsume lute, performed ancient sword dances, and composed poetry like the samurai of old. At the crack of dawn, he exchanged a last cup of sake wine with his officers. Followed by his samurai brethren, he held his sword high and ran down the hill into a blizzard of gunfire. After a short while, a bullet pierced his thigh, and Seigo was no longer able to walk. His follower, Beppu Shinsuke, then carried him to a large mansion, where in front of the gates the injured commander bowed in the direction of the imperial palace to commit seppuku, a ritualistic samurai suicide. With a knife, he slashed his abdomen from left to right to release his spirit. As he lay there dying, Shinsuke finished the grisly ceremony off by lopping his head off with a samurai sword, before rushing down the hill to his own demise. With the passing of Seigo Takamori came also the death of a way of life that had shaped the very fabric of Japan for almost a millennia. The samurai were no more. <laughs>